Okay, one more time. These two objects smash into each other, but instead of being an elastic collision where the kinetic energy before and after is the same, and instead of being an inelastic collision where 30% of the energy is lost, what happens if they stick together? If they smush and stick together, then we know that V1 prime is equal to V2 prime. Let's just call it V, the speed of the two smushed together afterwards. And the thing about this kind of collision, which is called perfectly inelastic, is that it is by far the easiest type of collision because all we need to do is look at the momentum. So let's do that. The total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards, which means that M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. But V1 and V2 prime are the same. So that means that M1 plus M2, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 plus M2 times this thing called V. Now we did this already. This is 20 minus 18. And M1 plus M2, well, that's just 8. So there, V is going to be 2 over 8, which is 0 0.25 meters per second. Positive, because smushed together, stuck together, they move to the right. Because this guy had more momentum to the right than this guy had to the left. The total momentum is to the right. They keep on moving to the right. So perfectly inelastic collisions where they stick together are the easiest, perfectly inelastic. But they did not stop. They didn't stop because if they had stopped, it would have broken the law of conservation of momentum. It's impossible for them, in this case, to stick together and stop, which means they still had some kinetic energy. So how much kinetic energy did they have? Let's first calculate the total kinetic energy before the collision. That was a half m1 v1 squared plus a half m2 v2 squared. We did this already. This is 80 over 2 plus 188 over 2. This turns out to be 94 joules. Hopefully that's straightforward. What about the kinetic energy after the collision? In this case, well that's going to be a half times the mass of the whole thing stuck together with 8 times 0.25 meters per second squared. The kinetic energy of it afterwards turns out to be only 0.25 joules. So it's still moving, but it has almost no kinetic energy. We can see then that as they smushed together and stopped, they had some energy that got absorbed. The amount of energy absorbed is obviously the difference. What they had and what they ended up with, it's 93.75. What that means in this case is that 93.75 joules of kinetic energy had to be turned into some other kind of energy, sound, heat, uh, smashing, breaking, energy of deformation, in order to remove all that energy. It's perfectly inelastic, not because that energy got absorbed, but because none of this absorbed energy gets given back. What's important to understand is that even in an elastic collision, this much energy must be absorbed. I'm going to write it must be absorbed, no matter what type of collision. What if it had been elastic from video A, which you've already watched? If it had been elastic, then 93.7 would have been absorbed, and then 93.75 joules of energy would have been returned to the objects as kinetic energy none of it would have been converted into some waste like heat or sound. But what about in part B? That was part A, video A. What about in part B? There was 30% lost. We can crunch the numbers there. I've already done it, so I'll just go a little bit faster. The kinetic energy at the end, KT prime, the elastic, the kinetic energy afterwards in part B turned out to be 65.15 joules. That's if you take the answers from video B and find the kinetic energy. And that means that 93.75 joules was absorbed and only 65.15 joules was returned as EK. Which means that this minus this, which means that 28.6 joules of energy were lost from the system, were turned into heat or sound during the collision. 
In the elastic collision, all of the absorbed energy was returned. In the inelastic collision, less energy than was absorbed was returned. In the perfectly inelastic collision, none of the absorbed energy was returned. That's the real definition of the three types that you need to know. Elastic, inelastic, perfectly inelastic. All of them require energy to be absorbed, but how much is returned as kinetic energy changes in the three different types.